Hello, everyone, and welcome to another podcast series uh, about the entrepreneurial mindset. So um, today we have two amazing guests, actually, uh, two of our own students, uh, Barrett student, and both of them have been bitten by the entrepreneurial bug. Uh, we have uh, Ishan Sima from, uh, as I said, from Barrett, and then we have um, uh, Grace Guidry. Grace is uh, Barrett College. She actually started a company when uh, she was in high school. So uh, without further ado, again, welcome to all of you. I would like to uh, first ask Grace. Grace, tell me about yourself. Tell us about your uh, journey that you decided to become an entrepreneur. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm Grace Guidry. I am from Louisiana, and I decided to come all the way over here to Arizona State University because it is one of the biggest business schools, if not the. And to me, I saw networking opportunity. That was the first thing that I thought would be a great fit for me. So what started my entrepreneurial journey was actually a single moment of time. I didn't always decide I was going to be an entrepreneur. I never thought that was my course. I looked up what are the highest paying jobs and it was doctor, lawyer. That was my path. I was so set in stone about that. <laughs> but then I, I saw people on social media driving supercars, flying in private jets. And I was like, how are you a doctor or a lawyer, but then you live such a lavish lifestyle? Something's not adding up if these are the highest paying jobs. So instead, I looked up the wealthiest people in the world. And what I came to find out is they were all entrepreneurs and they cracked the code. And it wasn't about the highest paying job. It was about who was paying those people, who was paying the salaries. So once I realized that, it was a single moment. It all clicked for me. And that's when I switched my entire life path, my goals for life. I was no longer gonna be a doctor or a lawyer. And instead, I decided that the, the fear of discipline was a lot better than the fear of regret. So. Very nicely said. Ishan. Yes. What about, you? tell us about your background. So my story is, starts when I was actually really young. It was about when I was like seven, eight years old. Um, I know everyone, when you're an adult, you one of the most common things to tell children when they're starting their own business or they have that sense of independence to start making money is, hey, why don't you open up a lemonade stand? And one of the things I did, I said, no, I wanted to be different and I wanted to use what I had in my own backyard. So my parents have, a gro have an orange tree that we've been uh, taking care of for about 20 years. And I said, you know what, I want to actually make use of this. So I got together like three or four of my friends and I asked them, hey guys, uh, you want to help me make like a little orange juice business, like make some money on the side? And they were like, yeah, sure, it sounds great. And uh, we got together, we got organized, I designated responsibilities for everyone. So I was like, all right, you're in charge of making posters, you're going to be making the juice, I'm going to be making the transactions because I came up with this. Um, but we split all the money evenly and we came up with the whole idea. But then when the day came around, I think it was like a Saturday at like, nine or ten o'clock in the morning I I called all these guys and they were like hey um you know we can't actually do this because uh, we don't want to <laughs> and when you're seven eight years old I guess that kind of makes sense like that that sense of drive and like that the commitment I don't think is something that you really get until you're older and one of my biggest regrets is that it didn't happen and it's actually one of the main reasons I decided to come here in the first place because when I think of that kind of story from my from my youth or I think of other uh, kids or who might have gone through similar experiences. I think of, I don't want commitment issues or any like executional issues to be the reason why I can't become an entrepreneur. Because truthfully, when it comes to planning and when it comes to that sense of innovation, ASU number one in innovation, um, I really feel like in order to just commit to that, you need to have the idea you need to have the execution and you need to have a plan in case that execution fails. Mm -hmm. So one of the main reasons I chose to come here is because I wanted to develop as much information as I could about business as a whole. So I would like, I would basically study all the aspects of business, whether that be managerial, whether that's the back end, 
even software, even though I'm not a completely a software guy. Um, but I wanted to get as much experience as I could in order to make sure that I give myself the highest chance for success. And that's the main reason why I'm here. Oh, fantastic. No, I think, um, and, and, and the reason you wanted to be an entrepreneur, was it money, control, impact? So if I were to kind of tie that question with another one, who would be your role model? Role model would, without a doubt, it would be my dad. And, uh, um, he's going to be so happy listening to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, my dad. Uh, he's got a he's got a tech company up in Silicon Valley in San Jose, and um, I did end up working for uh, for his company for a little bit of time and as a, as a sales rep. Um, not an easy job, I'll say. It's a little bit hard to to definitely to commit to that when you have to be that creative or have that level of expectation when you're just in high school. But I will say that in my time there, I definitely did understand what he had to go through because I would see both sides of it. I saw it both from a business standpoint and I saw it both from a home life standpoint as well because uh, my grandmother, she had dementia actually. So um, he had to come home after like maybe a 12, 13 hour work day and then you'd have to take care of her on the side for maybe another five or six hours. There, there'd be a lot of days when there was a lot of screaming and yelling from her side. And sometimes it'd just be so frustrating for everyone in the family because we'd all be trying so hard to help take care of everyone. But, you know, that sense of, that sense of spirit really kept him going. Because I, I asked him one day, I was like, Dad, what really made you want to continue to do this because if you're struggling so much like he had to deal with like staff firings his board was always hassling him and then he had to always contribute to finding new customers like it's not easy it's not easy i'll say that for sure and i asked him i was like why would you want to continue doing this and he said if you don't have that sense of grit that determination to do what it is that you wanted to in the first place then it wasn't worth having that idea if you ever wanted to come into fruition and then I thought about that, and I'm like, wow, that makes so much sense. Because I love that sense of entre entrepreneurial spirit. Truthfully, that's the reason why I wanted to follow that kind of lifestyle, because it's almost like a high you get when you get that idea, and then you think to yourself, wow, I can actually make this happen. And that sense of hope and that sense of kind of, I can bring something unique into this world, it gets you so riled up. But what's really going to like question how how much of success that you can make in your future is going to be can you actually commit to that and that in my opinion is why I value my dad so much because he presented me with that sense of you know you have to go through this you have to be stubborn in this world because there are people who will try to like break you down but it's up to you really to build yourself back up and stay at the top otherwise you won't have an hope as, as an entrepreneur. I'm going to hand it over to Grace. You saw doctors and lawyers not making that much more money. Yeah. And he said, I want to be a job maker, not a job taker, so that I can decide how much money I make. Who's going to be your role model? Well, as far as entrepreneurship, my role models weren't exactly around me in my circle. Mm. They were people just a few years older than me online uh -huh. making it happen. And for me... That kind of just settled it. It was possible. What everyone told me was an unrealistic expectation, these unrealistic goals. I need to follow this path being spoon-fed by society. To barely make ends meet, that didn't sit right with me. I thought that was unrealistic. So once I realized that people not even too much older than me were accomplishing all this and they were entrepreneurs, I knew I could definitely do it too. We were born just the same. If they could do it, why not? why not me? Hmm. So. Did anybody in your family um, instigate you or motivate you to say, go do it? Family was very supportive? Um, maybe a little bit less so because it is a risky business going into business. <laughs> so, but to me, fear shows where you're not free. Yeah. And... My ultimate goal in life is freedom. That's why I want to be an entrepreneur. Hmm. That's what I hope to accomplish. It's, it's not to have nice things, have a ton of money, power, control, any of that. It's freedom to do anything, 
help anyone and have control over my own life rather than other people having control over my life. Which is interesting because it's, it's my life, right? So I want to take control of my own life. But yeah, I'd say my family, they definitely are supportive of any goals I have because they mm. think that I will go after and chase any goal that I have any goal that I have, but they did want me to have a plan B as if, in case it didn't work out, but if you have a plan B, then plan A won't work, so entrepreneurship it is. <laughs> so you burn the bridges. Pretty much. After you cross them over, huh? Interesting. Um, for you, freedom, money, control. So in my case, I would say it was always more about leadership, actually. You can get leadership in a job, too. You can. Uh, you can. But I would say um, sometimes when you have, when I was mentioning before, when it came to that sense of like innovation and having that idea, mm. I feel like sometimes scientists also go through this, having that credibility to prove that you were the one to do it. <laughs> I feel like sometimes that's an issue that a lot of entrepreneurs have to go through. There's sometimes power struggles. Mm. And then there's a lot of like, oh, you took this from me. And hence why, like, we have patents and trademarks and all this stuff. But um, when I think about it from my perspective, I really want to prove from my side that I was capable enough to present my idea and being able to execute it successfully. So it's proving to yourself. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Ah. So, interesting question. I'm going to go more to you, Grace. 20 years out. 30 years out. Um, what would be the dream legacy that you would like to leave behind if you continued following on this path? Not, not this path or some... What would be that uh, story you would like to tell um, to your friends, to your family, to the future generation about, you know what? This is what I did. Yeah, uh, I guess for me, what I really want to... I guess go down in history for is of course my accomplishments and the things that I achieved but I really want to be known for the people I helped and this was actually completely inspired by you and it got me thinking for a while but basically that feeling of when you write that check to all of your employees and that moment when you realize that you were helping all these people, you were feeding these mouths and putting a roof over their head, and that that was all because of you, that's that's the legacy that I could, the best one I could dream of. So some people get a very big head when they do that. Some people become very humble when they do that. It makes you realize that uh, uh, power can make your head become swell up. Or it can be make you very, very humble. So, uh, no, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that vote of confidence. What do you think? What's your legacy? My legacy. What should it be? What would it be? Let's dream. I'm, I would say I want it to be more philosophical, my own legacy. I would want it to be more of a message. Okay. Because I, I value every day since I've come, since I've come here, like the opportunity to opportunities I've had for like education and especially to be part of like the business the WP Carey School of Business like there's not a lot of people out there who get those kinds of opportunities and my dad he would always say this he said he's he's always a product of a $100 education he never <laughs> fails to uh, let everyone know that's one of his biggest quotes um and I really think about that and I think you know now tell me more what do you mean by a hundred dollar education oh yeah so um he he grew up in in Bangalore and Bangalore, India. So his, um, around like 20, 25 years ago when he went to school, that was just like, in terms of rupees, I don't remember the valuation at the time, but, um, but it was just that much in order for him to complete his entirety of his college. Uh, that was the amount of money that was spent on that. And when I really think about that, I think of how like nowadays you spend thousands and thousands on, on like, even for some like private high schools or even college nowadays. And I think what my message would be as my legacy, I would want it to be opportunity. Because I feel like growing up in this world, for people who have that sense or uh, that I that chance to be an entrepreneur, I don't feel like a lot of people get that chance. And I would want my own kids to be able to be grateful for the opportunities that they've had mm. and be able to help people who might not have that same chance. 
So, Grace, talk to me about, for folks who are afraid, for folks who are saying that, nah, that's too risky, even to your parents who think it is a risky that you need to have a plan B, um, what do you want to tell them? If they say that, I'm not sure I'm convinced, it's a very, very risky thing, the chances of failure are very high. What do you tell them? Honestly, one thing. Yes, it's risky. The chances of failure are pretty high, but you know what is a higher risk of failure? A 100% risk of failure? Not trying at all. 100% chance you will fail if you don't even try. Do you want to be on your deathbed saying, oh, I wish I did this, I wish I did that. Oh, I should have taken that risk, taken that chance. Do you want to live a fulfilling life or do you just want to simply survive? All right, nicely said. What do you think? I think that there's always risk involved in entrepreneurship. I mean, it's one of the it's one of the biggest things that really makes it such like a debatable uh, career choice. But I'd say from my side, um, I said before that I came to ASU because I wanted to do everything I possibly could to set myself up for the best chance of success. Mm. But I'm also aware of that as an entrepreneur, there will be a lot of pitfalls that I won't always see. But one of the things that'll help me sleep better at night is knowing that I did 150% from my side in order to achieve what I want and really prep myself and get as many experiences and connections that I can to be successful in life. So even if I know if something does go wrong and maybe I'll have the support to actually build myself up, then at least I'll be able to know that I did my part and that's important to me. No regrets, right? Is that what you're saying? No regrets. I tried my best and if it didn't work, that's fine. But if I wouldn't have tried, I would have felt I would never know whether I would have succeeded or failed. No, great point. Very good point. So, as a as a closing question, both of you, starting with you, Grace, um, you're 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 at ASU now. If there was one thing or a couple of things that you think that ASU can help you uh, in your journey on this entrepreneurial journey. If uh, President Michael Crow was uh, hearing this podcast and uh, you would like to say, this is one thing I wish or I would like for ASU to help me, what would that be? I have been here one semester and already I have grown in so many ways. The biggest thing is obviously the network I'm building mm. and all the people I get to meet, all the like-minded people. I'm in a business school. Everyone is in the business of business. And so I'm around a lot of people with similar goals. But one thing that I really, really love that ASU does a really great job of doing is hosting all kinds of events. I set myself to the standard that every single day, I have to go to one business-related event of some sort, a club meeting, uh, a lecture, a speaking panel, anything outside of class time, just to further pursue my journey and make the most of my time here. So this checks your box today, correct? This podcast checks your box. Absolutely. <laughs> this is amazing. What do you think? What do you think yes, you could do? Uh, I know you've been here for one semester also. Yeah. But uh, going forward, if there was something that you'd say, would uh, you're hoping that ASU would provide you in your journey, what would that be? Well, um, I will definitely say that one of the things that I feel that it has offered me already, once again, like Grace said, it was definitely the events and the faculty meeting you both, for example. Like, there's with that, when it comes to networking, I feel like some it's really just based on like the person to actually make those um, choices who to meet how to meet them so going to these events it's um and the clubs for example those are really where i feel that's where i value most because without those really i'm not going to make the connections that i need that might say for like for example say if you meet someone in like i don't know investment club or accounting club you'd say hey you heard of this job opportunity at like northwestern or maybe at like or maybe google like heard they're hiring for like software interns and, and then you're like well I didn't know that but now I do because I met you and it's because I took that time to actually come and meet here but it wouldn't happen if the school didn't offer those in the first place so that's really where I hold true to my value in terms of thank ASU. you can thank I add you. on to that yeah absolutely uh, one thing that I will say I wish there were more of were entrepreneurship specific events there was a 
panel, speaking panel, and that was probably my favorite event of the whole semester. It was, I think, the only thing that was specifically... The fireside chat. The fireside yeah, the fireside chat. chat. Yeah. It was specifically about entrepreneurship. Everything else is business related, but a lot of it is a path towards a salary position. And so it's harder for me to meet more entrepreneurial minded people. So I feel like more events with people who aspire to be entrepreneurs would definitely get the right people together in the right room. I would definitely second that. Yeah. yeah. Good. Amazing answers. Great answers. Thank you for being here. I hope this was valuable. I hope this was valuable for you too. We'll have many more of these, so stay tuned. We'll be getting venture capitalists, we'll be getting entrepreneurs, we'll be getting successful entrepreneurs, we'll be bringing in entrepreneurs who have learned a lot after they fell and got up again and conquered the world. So till then, have a fantastic day, night, wherever you are, and we'll chat soon.